In this section, I will go through the different settings that pop up when importing an OBJ or 3DS file. I'll talk about the differences of the different ways to save a Thea file and how to merge and open those Thea files. First is to open an OBJ or 3DS file, and this is a great way to import scenes into Thea Render from programs that may not have a plugin for Thea Render. So we can still import them if we can export from that 3D program into an OBJ or 3DS file. After that's done, we go up here into Thea Render, File, Open, find the place where we've saved the OBJ or 3DS file, and this is where I've saved it. I'm going to open up this top OBJ file, and then these import settings come up. First settings for scale. Let's take a look at that now. And if we look at this to see what the scale currently is of this patch of grass, we just look at the little boxes here. And one little box here is a one by one meter area. We can also click on the object, go up here to tools, transform, and from this we can click on select units and we can see what the current units are of the current patch of grass. So it looks like right now this patch of grass is about 20 by 20 because it's negative 10 in one direction and positive 10 in the other. So this number plus this number equals about 20, which is a pretty big patch of grass. A patch of grass like this I would say is about maybe two feet by two feet at most, which means I need to make this about 10 times smaller when I import it. Well, that's no problem because I can just go file open, pick the same file, and now that I know I need it 10 times smaller, I can just say 0.1 and it will import the file 10 times smaller. So now if I zoom in, this grass is obviously a lot smaller now because we know that that's one by one meter area. So this is now smaller than one by one meter. I can go up to tools, transform, and now it's 10 times smaller, which is about two feet by two feet. That's exactly what I wanted. And that's also probably the scale I want when I import an OBJ file from that 3D program every single time. It's always going to have to be set 10 times smaller than what I exported it as. And if we click on the grass, we'll also notice that the texture in the diffuse channel is already there, which is pretty cool. Next, let's go through some of the other settings. Next is Swap YC. So if I have this turned off, now we'll see that the grass is actually pointing in the wrong direction when it's imported. I want to make sure that that is turned on so it can swap the Y coordinate with the Z coordinate and the model can be pointing upward. If the models are coming in sideways with whatever program we're using to export the OBJ file, we probably want to have that set the same way every time. Move to origin moves it to the origin, moves to ground, moves it to the ground. Group by material. If there's more than one model that's being imported, it can group them by material over here under models. In theory render, it is possible to have groups of models. then weld vertices if they're not welded, and we can pick the smoothing angle for the normals, which can also be called the Fong shading, and this determines how smooth the object will look depending on the angle.
at 30 degrees. If we have two polygons next to each other that are an angle of 30 degrees or less from each other, they will be smooth out like it's one smooth surface. If they're more than 30 degrees, they're going to look like really sharp angles. After the objects are imported, this can be changed. So now that I have the grass imported, if I wanted to change that, I can right click on here, go geometry, smoothing, and change that smoothing right here for each and every object that was imported. So if I switch this to solid, I can kind of see the smoothing of my geometry. And if I don't like it, I can now right click geometry smoothing and change it. Now I have the grass imported. I have it imported to scale. Now I'm able to add different lights, cameras, objects, so I can put in an infinite plane if I should so want. I can add different textures to it or import mo other models to the same scene. Let's try merging it with some more grass. I'll go to File, Merge. Pick the other grass file I want to merge it with. Open. We get the same import options, which should be the same since they came from the same 3D program. And now we have these different merge options for the models, lights, cameras, and the environment within the scene which is pretty cool that it's separated this way because then we can choose to say keep the current cameras and throw away any cameras that might be in the scene we're trying to import or there's the option for if there is a name collision so if two things have the same exact name we can choose to keep what's currently there and throw away what's trying to be merged or replace what's here if it has the same name with what we're merging. So this is good if we have some kind of model here that we've changed within the 3D program. Now we're merging it again and we want only the objects that have the same name to be replaced because we've updated them in the 3D program we used to make the new OBJ file. In this case I'm going to say add to current and it's added this new grass to what I currently had there. And in this case, the new grass, one of them does have the same name, so I wouldn't have got that if I would have done the same thing and instead said name collision, keep what's there because the name of this grass would have collided with the name of the grass that I already had there and it would have kept this grass instead of adding this new one to it. So it's a good thing I didn't pick that option. Now let's add a infinite plane. And I'm going to select the new grass, group it up, and move it down a little bit so it's down on the ground. There are these couple of leaves on the grass that are below the rest of the geometry. So when we import it, move to ground, but because these leaves were below the rest of the geometry, it moved it so the bottom of the geometry was on the ground. But it's easy to fix. All we do is select it, move it down so it is on the ground. Let's take an interactive render turn on the sunlight and see how this looks. It looks pretty good, but now that the grass has been imported into Thea Render, we can go into the material editor here and change it up so it looks better. And one thing with leaves and grass that will make them look better, if I zoom up on this grass, is a parameter called translucency. So right now it looks pretty dark in there, but if I turn on translucent, now it looks a whole lot brighter because the light is actually going through several of these leaves on the grass and is filling in some of those dark spaces quite a bit better than when there was no translucent. Next, let's go through how to save this. 
To make the interactive render look a little bit better, I'm going to go to the camera settings and change the depth of field because that's what's currently making it blurry. Now it looks quite a bit better, looks less blurry. So we got all the settings, the lighting, the cameras, e the materials, everything set up exactly as we want them. So now we want to save it. To save it, we can go to File, Save As, and when we pick the save type, there are a couple different save types to save it as. All of these will save the geometry and settings with the scene, except for the image.thea. This image.thea is the exact same image.thea in the darkroom here. If we click on save, go to image.thea, that's the exact same file it will save. It's actually saving the picture in the darkroom in the thea format so it can be reopened here. To show one of the coolest uses of the image.thea, I'm going to open up a new thea window. Here's the new thea window and I have nothing in the dark room or in the viewport. Now I'm going to go to File, Open, open up my old scene, and I'm going to open up the image.thea file that I saved in the dark room. As we can see, I stopped this quite early, only a few seconds of rendering here, but I want to continue where I left off. So because I've saved the scene, and the image.thea, and I haven't changed any of the settings at all, I can go to Render, Resume, and it will start off the render exactly where it left off, filling in the areas that haven't been rendered. This is a very cool feature of the render that we can save that image.thea, load it up, load up the old scene, make sure we don't change any settings, and we can start off the render exactly where we left off the render before. These other file types save the geometry and the settings for the materials. The Thea pack file is really cool because it will also save the textures with the geometry and settings for the materials. So like in this situation with the grass, we have this texture for the grass and let's say we want to move this to another computer instead of having to worry about is this file in the same place on the other computer we can simply save it as a theapack file and it will save that texture or any texture that might be in the scene with the geometry and settings so it will open up perfectly every single time on any computer it's on. Now to see the difference of the other file types, let's open up this window where I've saved every single file type. I also saved an image.thea because I rendered out a scene. Looking at these other files, it might be confusing why the scene.thea is actually a bigger file size because it actually has less information. It has all the same information as the pack.thea except no textures. But the file size is bigger, so this might be confusing. And the reason that is, is because in this particular case, we didn't have very many textures. And the pack.thea will compress the file when it saves it with the textures. This can make a smaller file size than the scene.thea, if we don't have too many textures. If we do have a lot of textures, it will most often be bigger than the scene.thea file. Next we have the XML and the TXZ file. The TXZ file is a zipped form of the XML file. If we go to File, Save As, there's a little reminder here that says Thea Zip XML to remind us that the TZX file is a zipped form of the XML file. A cool thing with the XML file is that if we right click, say Open With, Notepad, it is got all the information for all the parameters in Thea saved as a text file. So we got a bunch of points here for every single point that the geometry is made out of saved in text format. And then after it's all saved up, we can go File, Open, and 
pick whatever thea file we saved it as, open it up, and it should open perfect within thea. Especially if we saved it as a pack file, then it'll have the textures too. Even if the textures are moved on the computer, we don't have to worry about it. So that's how to import, scale, save, merge, and open within thea render. I hope you have fun with that, and I'll see you in the next section. Happy rendering.